name is Jim Dooley, and today I'm going to be doing a small code review um, on a bullet hell game that I just developed. This game uses Pixie.js and uh, my own game logic. So let's begin. First thing we're going to look at is our index.js. Um, here we use a loader to load our new game. What does that mean exactly? Well, let's first look at our loader. Our loader is simply a Pixie.js component. It grabs images from my image folder and then loads them and renders them when need be. As you can see here, call acid loader add and add two different images, a barrel green and a bold blue. Once it's complete, it calls this class method on images loaded, which calls the callback. And that callback is what is gathered from the load function here in index. And that callback is to generate a new game and append it to the document body. So let's look at our game. This is it. This is our, our, our simple game logic. Well, before we expand on it. In here you see I call a constructor on an element. Every time a game, a game uh, class is instantiated, it grabs an element and appends that element. So as you can see here on some of my class properties, uh, I added the element for a reference back to. And I have a person here, which is set to null. This person is going to be the player character. But right now we haven't had that added yet, so let's skip through that. A stage, which is a pixie container. Now pixie containers are interesting because th this is basically how all game objects are rendered. Uh, a container is made for the stage, or the game play field, I guess you could say. And anything added to that container is, well anything added to the game is nested inside that container. So think of it as like a huge group of nesting dolls and this stage is the very top layer. We call a render. What this render does is, is the, uh, detect the maximum width and the maximum height, very simple, and then just renders based on how big the window is stretched. We append the child here um, with the stage. And here we add a bullet tracker. Since this is a bullet hell game, we need a bullet tracker. It tracks all the objects, uh, all the bullet objects in the world, their, their distance that they travel, their speed. And then we call this method request animation frame. What this does is that every time a, uh, a frame of animation is needed by the game, it'll call this tick function. That's simply a class method on this class. So let's skip down to that real quick. The tick function admits an update event. This update event will be sent to all other components in our game, which will call their update event. This makes it easy to track uh, a speed in a smooth and efficient way or, 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 or track the distance that a bullet traveled in, in real time. We render the stage. Every tick, every animation frame, we need to re-render the stage again. So that's what we do. And then we request animation frame again. This is the basis of our game loop. Here we have a function to add a person, they log in, and remove a person, setting the person back to null. Here is some uh, randomized functionality to add the person anywhere randomly on the map so that no two games are the same. So our person object, what does that look like? Or class, I'm, excuse me. Oh, let's look at it. Our person class doesn't have too much logic. 
we have a reference back to the game, an is destroyed property, a speed property, a health property, and then we call another container. As I said, um, games are just containers nested within containers that have textures layered on them, right? So we give this uh, container position an X and a Y, which is passed through to, to the person class, which as you remember in our game, we randomize. So we create a body, which is basically the texture that's laid over uh, our container. Um, this body um, has an anchor as well. Oh, and I should go through this. The 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 anchor is um, the the spot in the container, which here is would be the midway point. It's from zero to one. Spot one in the container which interacts with other other objects. The coordinates. And so we simply add this texture to our container, and we add our container to our stage container. We have move left, move right, and move up, and move down functions. These functions are called after we place a, um, a event listener in our index. We have a, a simple check hit function, which checks to see if the um, the the, excuse me, checks to see if the person was hit by a bullet. Very simple. Does this body contains point, a method on the sprite object, which is great for us because it gives us a boolean, and the bullet position, which is the coordinates of the bullet. If this returns true, obviously return true, check hit returns true, right? And we have a remove method which removes um, the child from the, um, or which removes the container from the uh, game stage. All right, and as crazy as that sounds, that's the basic logic um, for our game. Um, Have here, and I'll show you guys very quickly. Sorry, just give me one second. Hmm. that. Now let me drag over my Chrome window. And let's refresh this page. Oops. I already died. Yeah, not an easy game. <laughs> Made the speed a little bit too fast. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, um, it's easy to make very simple game logic. The the, the real-time investment is, is refining and optimizing your game code to make a fun experience for everyone to enjoy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this walkthrough tutorial, um, and I hope I see you out there making your very own games.